Hello, it's Lou Collins. Today I've got a template for you and this one is for a Christmas card. Well, in fact, it could be a Christmas anything. It could be a decoration for a tree. Um, it could be something for your place settings as well um, or even a gift card holder. But I'm going to make a Christmas card from this. Uh, it's using a template from Papercraft Essentials issue 216. So it is called the stocking template. Now what you've got here is the outline of the stocking in various different sizes. There's four different sizes there. Then you've got the uh, fabric at the top you've got the toe and the heel elements as well the correct shapes for those so what I'm going to do first of all is cut this from red cardstock now to make a card from any shape what I would usually do is fold the card over and I'd make sure one area of the shape was on the fold to create two sides to the card with this particular shape and with a4 cardstock which is what I know most of you at home will have um, you can't do this unless you really minimise it down. So we're going. To, I'm going to show you how to do very similar, but um, two sides and then join them rather than having it the other way round. So I've got two layers of cardstock there. I am just going to join these with a little bit of repositionable glue, and this will come away completely afterwards as well. That's just to keep the two together while I cut through both layers. Then I'm very roughly going to cut around this shape, very roughly. I haven't actually decided which size I'm going to use, but there's only a small amount of difference between each. This is just so that I can layer this up onto the uh, now A5 sheets instead. So let's just position that. You see I needed to twist it slightly to get a good fit on there. More repositionable glue. There we go. Now I think I'll go around the outside. So for all of these shapes, I'm going to use the larger of the shapes. And I'm just going to trim around here. Okay, carefully. Just following the outer line. Obviously with this shape, a trimmer just wouldn't be any good at all. You wouldn't find that any advantage. You've got too many curves in here. But I do recommend if you're cutting shapes out like this to use large scissors. Uh, it just makes your lines a lot neater. Smaller scissors means uh, more little snips, more cuts, more opening and closing of the blades. And in turn, that just means more jagged edges. So one big pair, you can do lots of long cuts instead. So just working my way round. I'm actually moving the paper, not moving the scissors. I don't know if you've noticed, the scissors pretty much stay in one place and the paper is moved with my spare hand. It doesn't matter whether you're left or right handed. There we go. Okay, now just to remove my template. So just peel this off and remove the two layers as well. Now, if you do have any residue that you have left on there, something like, uh, let me just bury in my craft tools here, but something like the craft stash adhesive remover, we'll just pull any of this up for you. So it's just like um, a pencil eraser, but it's, it's a different material. It's like a thick piece of rubber or something. And I don't really know what it is. It almost feels like a bit of dried glue itself, but it does just cling to adhesive and it picks it up so just work your way over both layers of your card and pick up any adhesive that's remaining from the spray if you did spray them together there are other ways if you want to just hold the, them together but I find by using the spray adhesive and spraying them together there's no movement and you get exactly the same shapes so now to join these together what I do need to do is bring in a scoreboard you could fold but I find a scoreboard gives us a much neater finish so this is the creative scoreboard which has uh, the envelope fold envelope fold, envelope maker as well so just popping the top of the stocking along the edge there and I'm going to create a score line around about half an inch from the top there okay so nice and straight a nice firm score line there and I can fold that back so it's a mountain fold now with my glue, and this is a glue I highly recommend at the moment, it's new to Craft Stash, it's the Creative Craft Products glue. This is absolutely brilliant. It's a new formula, so we used to have Craft Stash glue, but we've, it's a new and improved formula. It's really tacky, and with this applicator you get the fine, uh, fine tip applicator that you just saw me use, and then you get the wider, almost glue spreader on the bottom for larger areas as well. It's absolutely brilliant. 
So I'm just going to press now my one of my templates over the top of the one that I've just glued the tab on, just making sure that it's all lined up perfectly. Now don't be too keen to open that up straight away, just give that a moment just to take. And there we go. And then what you'll have is your nice neat fold line there. Now your stocking of course isn't going to stand uh, like so because it doesn't have much of a base here. It will stand like this, which is absolutely fine. So now we can work with these areas. So I would suggest finding something like a glitter card, um, some sort of fabric maybe, some white felt would be perfect to cut these from. Now if I want texture, uh, a material I use a lot is actually watercolour paper. So it's not far off the colour that I want, so it is a little bit of an off-white, but that's fine. Um, I'm going to adhere and stick these to the cardstock or the watercolour paper. Cardstock's great because it's a little bit uh, thicker, but if you've just got thinner paper, that's fine. I'm just going to trim them out roughly and see if I can arrange these onto my watercolour paper. So one will go there and these two will fit there. Absolutely fine. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to use a small amount of spray adhesive. Just pop these on and then I'm going to cut round. And because I use the larger edge on um, this stocking, I'm going to use the larger edge on these ones to make sure they fit. So I'm going to peel these off. As always, I keep all my template pieces just in case I want to remake this project. And I'm going to bring these, just make sure that you've got the front and the back. It's a good idea to line them up with your project. So that looks, let's just check, I think that should be more like so. And then just do a squiggle so you know that's the back. The same with the heel there, so that will fit just like so, give it a squiggle. And lastly, the toe as well. Just make sure that's the right way around. Yeah, like that, so then that's back. Okay, now what I'm going to do to add some texture to this, I'm going to bring in an, a texture or an embossing paste. Now this is um, dimensional. This is one that was actually in a Paper Craft Society box. Let's just take the lid off there that's got wet and put that aside and I'm going to take a palette knife there we go and just stipple over my cardstock like I said I've already got the base color but I'm just going to put some of this on I'm not going to do this very thickly but it's just going to be enough to give me a nice stippled look which of course fur would have this is an alternative if you don't have uh, a fabric that you can use for the stocking, for the top edging, the fluff, and also for the toe and the heel. So as you can see there, just a little bit and just stippling, the same way as they probably would with the old ceilings years ago. And then if I can just hold that to the, there we go, so you can hopefully see the texture that we've built up on there. So do this to all three pieces and then set them aside to dry. And because you're only stippling quite thinly, shouldn't take too long to dry. You can also use a heat tool just to set them a little bit quicker. Don't hold it too close because you will end up with um, bubbles as such. So just while those finish drying off, I'm going to run my uh, stocking through an embossing folder. Now the perfect embossing folder for this design is from my Textures Nordic Christmas range. Um, so this has this beautiful sort of Nordic pattern on it, very much like a, a fair isle pattern. So I'm going to run this through my die cutter machine. Now that's both layers of cardstock at the same time, of course, doing the whole card. So um, you may need to adjust your plate just to fit because you've got a lot of material going through there. So try on the lower setting and see if that hasn't quite embossed the way you'd like, bring it back to a higher, more, more pressure, maybe an extra plate in there. But don't try and put too much through your machine at once because of course die cutting machines uh, do have a certain pressure where they just won't run through and you can damage it by forcing it. Hopefully you can see there. I've got a beautiful design, just hold it up to the 
correct light there so you've got a beautiful design that goes through both the front and the back so you'll need to almost peel away the stocking again from the front from the back but both layers are done there so that's the um, Nordic Christmas Nordic Christmas embossing folder so pop this to the side and we can start constructing the rest of our stocking now now I'm going to bring in a distress oxide or a distress ink let's use tea dye I'm using ink for this I'm just going to go around the outer edge now this is going to be very subtle but it is just going to give this the stocking a little bit of shape so a little bit of darkness to the outer edges and almost a bit of shadow you only need to do it really where there's not going to be any of your white elements and then your white elements as well I'm going to just gently brush over the edges of these to give them a little bit of warmth just on the edges again sort of giving them that that curved look the shadow look and they will go like so so let's just work out that's that way and the same with this one so this is the heel and then the toes as well so just not adding much more ink onto my brush and going ever so lightly there we go so now I can use my ink and I'm going sorry my glue I'm going to use my creative glue again to stick these down just onto that front layer just making sure that's all around the edge and when I adhere that I'm going to just pop that down and then after that ensure that you can still open your card because you don't want to have accidentally stuck anything to itself no that's all good and then the same with the other two elements here so there's all the layers on top now to decorate this a little further I'm going to add a little bit of twine and I'm going to bring in this is also from a paper craft society box some little bells I can't, must admit I can't remember which box it's from but when you subscribe to paper craft society um, you do get lots of little additional bits like this which are really good fun so with the bells I'm going to thread them onto the twine and then I'm going to wrap the twine around the top of the stocking there and tie a nice big bow. And there we have a fun stocking card, like I say it could be a decoration, it stands by itself. Um, it could be a decoration if you wanted to add a loop of um, ribbon to it so it could hang on a tree. Uh, you could put a name on here for a table place setting, maybe with the menu choices inside. Um, but really lovely template to keep aside for the festive period. Um, so as you can see I just added the bells onto the end of the twine there. Um, just by threading them through and tying a knot and then tying a lovely bow, big bow into the twine kind of gives it a rustic look so you'll find the template as a free download on craft world go and check that out and don't forget to share anything you make using our templates over in the inspiration gallery